nearing 8 o'clock Pacific time, so stay with us as the polls close across B.C. Who will form government? Could the NDP be rewarded with a majority government? after calling that snap election. How will Andrew Wilkinson and the B.C. Liberals perform? Can newly minted B.C. Green Party leader Sonia Furstenau hold her seats? We'll have all the results as they come in. Watch and listen with us as British Columbians decide who should run this province. It's never a bad time to ask British Columbians what they want to do and who they want to lead them, and that's why I called the election. We're now being forced into general election that nobody in British Columbia wants except the NDP. It's not a time when we put the interests of a political party ahead of the British Columbians. We need a government that's focused on the needs of people now more than ever. This is not a time to worry about the details so much as to get people back to work. The BC Green Party is here as a very viable alternative. We're keen on getting British Columbia going again. We're standing up for the future that we believe in. This is an extraordinary time. It is an extraordinary election. Good evening. The polls have just closed across the province. You are watching British Columbia Votes 2020. I'm Mike Killeen. And I'm Anita Bath. Well, it's been an unusual election campaign, one mm -hmm. that happens to be right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. John Horgan calling a snap election, safe to say, a campaign like no other. But the parties have managed to maintain smaller than usual headquarters this evening. Our reporters will be live throughout the evening from those locations. Val Puri is at NDP headquarters here in Vancouver. Dan Burrett at Liberal headquarters, also in Vancouver. And Gregor Craigie is in Victoria tonight at the Green Party headquarters. Here back at the CBC, we'll also touch base with Stephen Quinn and Michelle Elliott throughout the night. Stephen has with him the party insiders gathering their reaction to what we're seeing. And Michelle will be talking to voters and to candidates. Uh, we're going to look at uh, what this all means in terms of the popular vote. It helps give us an idea of uh, where things are going. Look at this. Uh, the NDP at 45.4% uh, at this point. Uh, going back to 2017, they were just over 40%. The Liberals at 35% right now. Uh, they were at just over 40% as well back in uh, 2017. And you can see where the, uh, the Greens stand at this point as well. But of course, none of this means anything unless it translates into seats. So let's take a look. NDP needs to pick up three in order to get the majority of 44 seats. It's sitting at 47 right now. That's an increase of nine seats. If they can hold on to those nine seats, this night is looking pretty good for the party. Now, keep in mind, 54 of the ridings right now are under a 100 vote margin. So things are extremely close. Yeah, about 30,000 votes, uh, 30,000 plus votes in our system uh, right now so okay we're going uh, to head over to tanya fletcher and justin mcelroy for some more results yeah let's take you through some of those right now oh, and we want to begin uh let's see where we're going to begin here we are going to begin in richmond queensborough so again this is one that's been going back and forth look at this a 10 uh, mar 10 vote margin only right now still 588 polls reporting so it's still close yet but jazz joe hall is slightly maintaining his lead over the NDP's Amund Singh. It's good news for the Liberals, but the NDP have much more good news right now. They're taking the seats they need to. They're taking Oak Bay Gordon head early on, just 73 votes, but this is the sort of result they need. Another riding where they're doing well early on is Coquitlam Burke Mountain. That's another one we said that they had to take. Right now, 127 vote lead over Joan Isaacs. Finn Donnelly could be on his way there too. Yeah, and this is good. just so close in so many ridings. Let's head out to Abbotsford Mission. Uh, we've got uh, Simon Gibson, who's up a 94 uh, vote lead, 11 of 99 polls reporting, so still early. But uh, Pam Alexis, uh, this 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 is going to be pretty close. She's a mission mayor, and so this one will be. She she was believed to be, you know, a very good candidate for the NDP. This one could make it a little bit closer. But we're just getting word we have another call to make. <laughs> And the CBC Decision Desk has seen enough tonight to project now an NDP majority government in British Columbia. This is what John Horgan was so anxiously seeking, and it would appear that he has uh, reached that goal tonight. Our gamble may have paid off. Of course, he called this election in the middle of a pandemic. 
there was no shortage of criticism, but I mean, I don't think you can criticize him now. He's going to say that he made the right decision. Let's take a look at yeah, how yeah, he got here tonight. Thanks, Bell. We want to head over to Stephen Quinn now. Now, Stephen, uh, very quiet at headquarters at the NDP where Bell Puri is. So I'm expecting perhaps some cheers in the room where you are. That's exactly <laughs> what I was expecting when we had the call of the NDP majority. There you go. There's there's a little enthusiasm shown by Nikki Hill here, the former director of organization for the NDP. Um, when you saw that come across, Nikki, obviously a little bit of relief considering this was kind of a gamble on the part of John Horgan. Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting to see, but still, we remain, you know, cautiously optimistic. This is a big night for the NDP, and they're going to have lots of issues to come up in the weeks and months ahead. It starts with who's going to be in cabinet, but then broader, it turns into they have all this political capital. How are they going to spend it? There are all these people on the left side of their coalition who have been demanding bolder action on the environment, on the economy, on so many policies as John Horgan has tacked a more moderate path. What will they get and what will they do if the NDP doesn't change? These are serious issues that we're going to be talking about for the next three to four years. But tonight, this time, New Democrats won. They won big. They won more MLAs than any time in B.C. history. And they have a lot to celebrate on this evening. Tanya, Justin, thank you. Now, there are about a dozen ridings today that we can't call. They're just too close, so you'll have to wait for those mail-in ballot results. If that's one of your ridings, you'll have to check in about 13 days. <laughs> That is it for our election coverage. British Columbia, you have voted in a John Horgan majority government, a thumping of sorts, I'd say. I'm stealing Mike's term there. <laughs> and a historic win for John Horgan, the only NDP leader to ever be re-elected in British Columbia. Well, they say politics in BC is never dull. It certainly wasn't tonight. To borrow a phrase from another election, an orange crush in British Columbia tonight. From all of us at CBC, thanks for listening and watching tonight. Have a great evening. And so that all brings us to tonight, election night. And what happens tonight will help shape the B.C. provincial government. We're about to find out how similar or how different this chamber looks in the weeks ahead. And we are doubling down on health care. We're going to invest in infrastructure. We're going to bring down car insurance. We're going to bring down child care costs. And we're going to give a $1,000 COVID benefit to British Columbia, middle class British Columbia families to spend on their needs. Abolishing PSD for a year, $10 a day daycare for real, getting rid of small business income tax, taking care of our seniors, and getting rid of the ICBC monopoly. We can have uh, governance in this province that truly focuses on evidence, on solutions, and absolutely puts people and their health and well-being at the center of everything. Good evening and thanks for joining us here for Decision BC, our special coverage of our province's 42nd general election. It is 8 o'clock. Polls are now closed and our team is ready to start bringing you results the moment polls start reporting. Now, throughout the night, Look for our Decision BC ticker along the bottom of your screen there. It will have numbers for leading and elected candidates in all of BC's parties. And that number will be fluctuating as polls and results come in. Just after polls close at 8 tonight. And like so many other things in 2020, this vote has been described as unprecedented. And we have a great team digging into the developments we will be seeing tonight. Absolutely. Starting with our Legislative Bureau Chief, Keith Baldry, who was here with us in studio, as you saw just a moment ago. Richard Zussman is at the Legislature in Victoria with an in-depth look at the writings there. And you just saw a sneak peek of them. We have reporters at all of the party headquarters tonight. Our John Hua is at Liberal Party headquarters in Vancouver. Nitu Garcha is at the NDP HQ in Vancouver. And our Kylie Stanton is in Victoria with the Greens. We also have reporters out in the field tonight. Jordan Armstrong is starting his night in the Tri-Cities. CKNW's Janet Brown is in Surrey and Sarah McDonald is in Vancouver. And we will have analysis out of the Okanagan as well from Global's Doris Maria Bregalisi. That's right. We also have a political panel with us this evening, uh, which will be reacting to the results as they come in, representing all the key parties tonight, discussing several key moments 
from the election campaign. CKNW's Simi Sarah is with our panelists tonight. And Simi, uh, our panelists are no strangers to election night, each of them with first-hand knowledge of what the candidates are, are going through right now. Absolutely, Chris and Sophie, that's what's going to make, I think, our discussion so fun and informative this evening. Uh, we have tonight uh, with us Mo Sahota from the NDP. We have Puneet Sandar from the B.C. Liberals. We have Yonina Campbell from the B.C. Greens. Thanks to all of them for joining us tonight for our discussions. Let's start off first with Yonina. Yonina, what do you think the Greens need to do tonight? What are you hoping for? All right, Keith, thank you very much. All right, it's not just individual ridings we want to keep an eye on tonight. We're also looking at regions. Richard Zussman joins us now uh, with a look at uh, geographic regions we want to keep tabs on tonight, Richard. Yeah, and when people get elected, they come from those regions here to the legislature, Sophie, and they serve their community. And one of those regions is Surrey. And this is always such an important part of the political map. So here's Richmond's been pretty tough to break through for anybody but the Liberals for uh, many years. Very tight race in Richmond, Queensboro in 2017. We're keeping a close eye on that one. Richard Zussman has a look at some of those close races and, uh, and pickups for one party or the other. So uh, what are you seeing so far, Richard? Yeah, this is the story of the election right here. So the NDP has not won in Richmond since 1972. This is Richmond. Let's look at 2017. All red. Tonight, bam, orange. And this is the big one. Richmond, Queensboro it was the third closest riding in the last election. And you can see tonight, so far, Amon Singh is up just 12 votes with 13 of 88 polls reporting. Jazz Joe Hall is the incumbent, and the NDP spent a lot of time focused in on this riding. This is another one the NDP really believes they can pick up. Henry Yao up a little bit more than 115 votes of 20 of 77 polls reporting. This is all good news clearly for the NDP. Richmond Steveston, no incumbent here. Like in South Centre, John Yap retired. Matt Pacairn's trying to replace him, but so far he is trailing by a little bit less than 150 votes with 34 of the 85 polls reporting. And let's uh, have a quick look here at Langley. This is one of the big races we have our eye on tonight, and it's a bit of a surprise. Let's see how that uh, translates with the popular vote right now. And the NDP have 45% of the popular vote to the Liberals, 35%, and the Greens with 16%. All right, we have more breaking news for you. And we told you earlier it would be an NDP government. Now we can tell you it will be an NDP majority. John Horgan fulfilled his wish. That's right. And the lead's so significant in the voting tonight that the, the mail-in ballots aren't even a factor. We're able to make that call at uh, an hour and a half after polls closed, Keith. Yeah, very historic. And again, we feel the, the distance between the NDP and the BC Liberals is such that even if some of these writings flip back because the mail-in vote comes in, uh, we don't think there's enough of them to deny the NDP a majority government. Again, that um, Thank you very much to all of you for joining us and taking an interest in this as well. Are we checking in with Keith one more time before we go, or is he done? You're done, buddy. I think we're you, done with you. You can just relax. <laughs> That's fine. Go eat, Thanks. go eat the Halloween candy in the newsroom now. There is an army of producers working behind the scenes for us. Thank you very much to everybody who uh, helped us out and to the director as well. We love you guys and we couldn't do it without you. It's interesting to cover an election campaign in a pandemic as well. Here are some highlights from tonight as we say goodnight to you. Good this night. is one of the most watched ridings in the province tonight, Vancouver Falls Creek. Chris, around 8 o'clock when the polls close, we did hear some music playing through the speakers behind me, but the only people to really hear it are members of the media who make up the entirety of this room. Simi Sarah will be handling our political panel. Simi, we'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much for that, Christian. Yeah, let's turn to our panel now. Our Yanina Campbell, Puneet Sander, Mo Sahota with us. The story of tonight is really about this big, big spread that we have seen on the map. And this is where the NDP is really succeeding and where Horgan's message seems to have resonated. This has been an extraordinarily difficult election for many, many reasons, but it's one that I believe had to happen. But for now, we all have a responsibility to be patient, 
to respect the democratic process and to wait the final results. As with everything the NDP do, actions will speak louder than words. The other great challenge that we have of our time is climate change. And he's going to be mindful of what we've done with the Greens on, on Clean BC. And he's going to be attentive to what they have to say as well as to the Liberals. This guy will govern for all. But now this is on him. And he's going to have to, and, and his government, and they're going to have to own the decisions that they make. And I think I'm grateful for all British Columbians that we have put the election behind us. Thanks so much. Let's get back to work. Liberal Party is tempted to rely okay, on Catholic. I hate to cut you off there, but we do have to just move on here uh, because we are coming up to the 8 o'clock hour. Polls about to close in just a few seconds now. Stay with us. It's an election campaign like nothing we've ever seen. Probably a lot of other things that we could be focusing on. It wasn't enough time just to absolutely grab for power. A campaign many didn't want in the first place. We're here on the stage debating things when we should be in the legislature. In the middle of a pandemic, why do we need the upset and turmoil of a general election? The best course of action is to put the politics and the election behind us. Tonight, will the NDP tighten its grip? Make their promises true. Will the Liberals find their way out of the wilderness? Making sure my family is healthy and safe. Or will the Greens once again hold the balance of power? Right now, we need a lot more compassion. We're about to find out as BC voters get their say. From CTV News Vancouver, this is Election 2020 with Mi Jun Lee and Scott Roberts. Good evening and thank you for joining us. It was a risky move calling at election one year early and during the COVID-19 pandemic. But John Horgan is betting and hoping that it pays off tonight with an NDP majority government. However, will voters punish him for triggering a snap election and return the B.C. Liberals to power? Whatever happens, it is sure to be a fascinating night in B.C. politics and CTV is the place to watch as it all unfolds. And now the team behind the scenes. We have the best in the business analyzing all the results with lightning speed. We won't know what the new legislature looks like for a while yet, but the decision desk has calculated the range of seats each party can expect. And CTV's Rashmi Nair has a look at that over at the Power Board. Rashmi. Meijang, it is a clean slate as the polls are closed and we are going to see all 87 ridings light up with different colors as officials are elected in this election. John Horgan hoping to see at least 44 of these holding on to the 40 seats that the NDP had and gaining four more for a majority. Here is our projection for the night. It's going to change as those votes come in, but this is what we're looking at based on analysis and data. The NDP winning a minimum of 42 seats tonight, too shy of a majority, but going as far as 61 seats. The Liberals right Right now, going into this election with the polls closing, just bordering on majority government territory. And again, these projections will change throughout the night as the votes come in. I think one of the big questions really coming out of tonight is whether the Liberal Party coalition is going to hold. Because as we know, the Liberal Party is a coalition of federal liberals, federal conservatives, and also uh, some very extreme social conservatives. And we've seen a lot of that spilling out. Liberal Party has tolerated a lot of those points of view with Within the party, and I think we're start. You know, we're we're going to see some shakedown from that. So it will be very interesting to see what comes out of this as far as the future of the Liberal Party. Yeah, no okay. surprise here as we see popping up on our screen, uh, John Horgan, of course, leader of the uh, New Democrats, uh, re-elected in Langford, Wanda Fuca, and you just saw Adrian Dix, Health Minister, uh, re-elected in his riding as well. Nick. Breaking news okay. to share. Here it is. The CTV decision desk is declaring an NDP majority win. The NDP will win the election that John Horgan called to win his own mandate. So how are we able to make the majority call and how many seats can they win? Let's go. No, we're not going to go to Rush Meeting there. We're going to go to her in a second. But we have the NDP leading or elected in 47. 
Now, the majority that you would need is 44. So leaving our elected in 47, this is what uh, the potential seat change is looking like. Significant. Uh, plus seven for the NDP. Uh, they only needed four. Uh, and look at the Liberals. Uh, really decimated in this election, losing eight seats and uh, one pickup at this point for the Green Party. So, boy, an historic NDP majority government win for John Horgan. Let's go right to CTV's Binder Sajjan, who is at NDP headquarters. Uh, boy, there must be some smiling faces there, if there's anyone in the room behind you. <laughs> yeah, well, there are a lot of journalists here, but there are a couple of staff members, and definitely there are smiles. You can definitely feel that the energy has picked up with him. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. It's an election like no other. As we speak, British Columbians are still casting their votes in this snap election called during a pandemic. Panelists Michael Prince, Uvic Lansdowne Professor of Social Policy and Political Scientist, and Kimberly Spears, a policy analyst and political expert currently with Uvic's School of Public Administration. Thank you both so much for being here with us. We look forward to hearing more of your insights and reaction as the night plays out. It's a good thing that we have a big studio. No pool no. noodles needed. We're yeah. all good. Uh, pools closed just, uh, well, two minutes ago. And our Ben Nesbitt is live outside the polling station at George J. Elementary in Victoria office. Uh, we're going to check in now with April Lawrence. April is covering the only leader party here on the island tonight. That's the Greens. They're at the Delta Hotel. Uh, and April's also one of the few people inside tonight, which is, <laughs> which is a win because the temperatures drop. How are you, April? How are things going at the, I guess, the Green headquarters tonight? Well, yes, it is warm here, Joe. Yes, it is, but it is unlike anything I've ever seen. We've all covered a lot of elections. This one is bizarre. I'm in the room here. There's maybe about 20 people, most of them reporters. Now, before we take a quick run back down, uh, up and down the island, looking at the latest results, I want to ask uh, our panelists here about the mail-in ballots once again. Do the mail-ins favor one party over another? We're looking at some really early green success here. I mean, is this something that we're going to see lots of NDP votes in those mail-in ballots? Kim, let's go with you first. Um, yeah, the polls have, um, and research has shown that um, the mail-in ballots will be tending to uh, favor the incumbents. What other writings do we have to report from now? We're going to check in very, very quickly, uh, very shortly, with April Lawrence at Green Party headquarters. And let's uh, head to April now. April. <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, it's hard to tell. Um, not your typical election. Usually you'd be hearing cheers and the crowd would be going crazy, but Adam Olson has been declared the winner in Sandwich North and the Islands. He's here in the room, uh, but of course the supporters aren't here, so there's no one to cheer. He's making his way around uh, each of the media booths doing interviews. He certainly has a smile on his face. This is exactly what the party was hoping for, that him and Sonia, who is leading in her riding of Cowichan as well, would retain their seat. We heard that the party officials say that earlier. That really was what they were hoping for tonight. Um, that looks to be like what they have achieved as well, picking up potentially another seat, their first off Vancouver Island, West Vancouver, Sea to Sky. They had said going into this election night that they were feeling good, that they felt that that riding was in reach. They are leading there right now, so they're feeling quite good about possibly picking that up. They were leading for a little bit in Nelson Creston. Um, that looks like they, that candidate has fallen back a little bit. Um, I can see the party officials, they're jumping, they're cheering, something good has happened. Sonia? West Vancouver and Sonia both declared, so ahead. Okay, so <laughs> this is the excitement that's happening here tonight. In light of all that's gone on in the United States over the last several months and here in Canada, it was a surprisingly tone-deaf answer <laughs> by others. Uh, it didn't take long. We can now tell you that we are headed towards an NDP majority. John Horgan got his wish. Uh, we knew it was going to be an NDP government. It will now be more than that 44 seats. Let's bring up the seats count right now. 51 seats to the NDP. They're leading or elected in the Liberals uh, with 32. And you heard, uh, well, Michael, you said if it's around that 30 mark for the Liberals, we could see a change in leadership. Yep. But we now can say that it will be an NDP majority in this province. 
And, and Joe, this is only the second time. The only other premier who's done this, and I had never thought I would put these two names in the same sentence, W.A.C. Bennett and John Horgan. <laughs> W.A.C. Bennett at a minority in 52, called a snap election in 53, got his majority. Now John Horgan is only the second premier in B.C. history to replicate that rare maneuver. And uh, he's in the hall of political snap election fame. <laughs> and breathing a huge sigh of relief. Really. Absolutely. Um, and again, we still have one more that we're waiting for. Um, Michelle Stilwell. It's a long time incumbent looking like uh, she's in jeopardy here as we look at uh, the seats. This is as it stands right now. So either leading or elected. And we're looking at 55 of those orange seats for the NDP, 29 for the Liberals, and right now three for the Green Party. Looks a little different than three hours ago when we started this yeah. thing, doesn't it? <laughs> and, and, and just the psychology of this, of, of where NDP will be looking across at colleagues rather than their opponents. I mean, this mm -hmm. really shows what a majority looks like and feels like in the, in the legislature when uh, you've literally pushed the other parties further into a corner. <laughs> well, folks, if, you, if you're tired of hearing about an election, uh, I've got bad news. We'll probably be talking about it for a few more weeks as we wait for those uh, mail-in ballots to get counted. Then, of course, there's by-elections to be had. We need to find out uh, who will form cabinet. And yep. so there's a lot to figure out, not to mention the leadership of the Liberals. Uh, that's on the line. But for now, I think uh, we are going to call it there and uh, say thank you for mm -hmm. watching. And thank you to both of you for being yeah. here. Yeah. And uh, thank you as well to all our crew in the field yeah. and those who've worked so hard, uh, whether it's graphics in the control room or any of the support staff that have been with us tonight. It really does take a village to put on an election show, so we're so grateful to all our colleagues uh, as well. And thank you for joining us tonight uh, for our election coverage. We will keep you posted in the days and weeks ahead. And you can uh, keep up to speed on that Qualicum, uh, Parksville Qualicum writing. Checknews.ca will have it there. We'll have it on Twitter and social media as well. So as soon as we know know uh, what the outcome is there. We'll put it out uh, to as many people as possible. All right. We'll let you know. For Joe Perkins, I'm Stacy Ross. Thanks so much for being with us. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you soon. Good night. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. Il est 20 heures sur la côte du Pacifique. Les bureaux de scrutin sont maintenant fermés. Les bulletins envoyés par la Poste sont, espérons-le, arrivés à destination à temps. Nous vous accompagnons ce soir sur Radio-Canada Télé, Radio-Canada Première, Radio-Canada.ca et sur Facebook. Je m'appelle Julie Carpentier et je vous souhaite la bienvenue à cette soirée électorale. We're not just throwing money uh, to try and buy votes. We're throwing money at people to stimulate economic activity, to keep them safe, and to build the, the services that people need. We've got to rebuild BC, and that means that we're going to get rid of the sales tax for a full year and reduce it to 3% in the second year. We aren't all equal. I wish we were, but we're not. In this province, in this country, and around the world, En Colombie-Britannique, les élections ont habituellement lieu à date fixe, mais le premier ministre sortant a dérogé à cette règle et a déclenché des élections anticipées en pleine pandémie de COVID-19. Un mandat de trois ans et demi, c'est une éternité en temps de crise, a déclaré John Horgan pour justifier sa décision. Mais ses opposants lui reprochent d'être opportuniste. Le nouveau Parti démocratique à la tête d'un gouvernement minoritaire espère décrocher une majorité. La bande qui se trouve au bas de l'écran vous indique le nombre par parti de circonscriptions en tête. Et dans le coin à gauche, le nombre de circonscriptions dans lesquelles nous avons des résultats. Est-ce que nous allons assister ce soir à l'arrivée d'une vague orange ou plutôt à un duel avec les libéraux? Quel sera le poids du Parti vert? John Horgan a-t-il réussi pendant cette campagne à convaincre les électeurs qu'il est l'homme de la situation alors que le monde entier fait face à une crise sanitaire sans précédent? Nous allons tenter de répondre à plusieurs questions ce soir. Et pour cela, je suis entourée de journalistes chevronnés, de fins observateurs de la scène politique. J'accueille les analystes Nicolas Kenny et Julie Landry. Bonsoir à vous deux. Bonsoir. Commençons Bonsoir. avec vous, Nicolas. C'était vraiment des circonstances, là, une campagne qui, qui sort de l'ordinaire du jamais vu. Les généraux des trois principaux partis. J'accueille ce soir Mathieu Goyer chez les Néo-Démocrates, Benoît Ferradini chez les Libéraux et puis Adrien Blanc 
au quartier général des Verts. Bonsoir, messieurs. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Bonsoir Julien. Mathieu, chez les néo-démocrates, bon, pendant la campagne électorale, les sondages indiquaient une belle avance pour le NPD. Quelle est l'ambiance ce soir, à ce moment-ci, les attentes? Des gens et de ce que veulent les gens, ils veulent des services de santé, ils veulent des services sur lesquels ils peuvent compter. Il est 21h12 sur la côte du Pacifique. Si la tendance se maintient, Radio-Canada prévoit que le nouveau Parti démocratique formera le prochain gouvernement et ce sera un gouvernement majoritaire. Je répète, si la tendance se maintient, Radio-Canada prévoit que le nouveau Parti démocratique avec à sa tête John Horgan formera le prochain gouvernement et ce sera un gouvernement majoritaire. Donc, John Horgan a remporté son pari en déclenchant des élections en pleine pandémie. Et puis, Timothée, donc, euh, dites-moi, il euh, faut voir ses gains hein, <rire> sur cette carte de la Colombie-Britannique qui était moitié-moitié rouge et orange la dernière fois. Mais là, avec une avance dans 54 circonscriptions, comment ça se montre sur votre carte? Bien, étonnamment, on le voit très peu quand on regarde de loin parce que les circonscriptions de l'intérieur, il y a quelques petits changements quand même. Regardez vers le sud, euh, ça c'est actuellement, euh, voilà, euh, aux dernières élections. Donc il y a quelques changements. Boundary, Simulcamin, euh, donc qui va, euh, qui semble aller vers euh, le NPD. Et la, le point vert ici, donc c'est West Vancouver où... Le dernier gouvernement où c'était grâce à eux qu euh, que le NPD avait la balance du pouvoir, grâce à une alliance. Mais quand même, les Verts s'en sortent très bien ce soir, même s'ils ont perdu la circonscription de leur ancien chef, euh, Andrew Weaver. Merci beaucoup, Anaïs. On va vous retrouver un petit peu plus tard. Parce que nous avons d'autres élus à vous présenter et d'autres <rire> candidats de défait. Il y a un chef qui est défait, c'est le chef du Parti con conservateur comme son prédécesseur, John Cummins, en 2017. Il n'a pas réussi à, faire, à se faire élire ce soir. Trevor Baldwin de Fort St. John. C'est Dan Davies qui est réélu dans Peace River Nord. Pour un deuxième mandat. Victoria Swan Lake, le ministre de l'Éducation, est réélu pour un cinquième mandat. Rob Fleming, qui est un ministre qu'on surveille toujours de très près comme francophone, parce que vous n'êtes pas sans savoir que la Cour suprême du Canada a accordé de nouvelles écoles aux francophones de la Colombie-Britannique. Et c'est lui qui va gérer ce dossier. Et en deuxième position dans sa circonscription, c'est une candidate verte. Harry Baines est réélu dans Surrey Newton, le ministre du Travail. Il demande un cinquième mandat, qui est là pour un cinquième mandat devant un Paul Beaupareil qui n'aura pas réussi de, à le déloger. Dans cette circonscription, quand même, un bastion NPD. Donc, je le disais, hein, il y a vraiment de, des gens expérimentés qui retournent à l'Assemblée législative avec John Horgan. Burnaby Lloyd, Katrina Chen est réélue la ministre d'État à la garde d'enfants. Elle a gagné sur son plus proche rival, Tariq Malik, le, le, le libéral. C'est un troisième mandat pour Mme Chen. Donc, euh, je vous invite, je vous le disais, hein, radiocanada.ca, c'est vraiment votre rendez-vous pour avoir euh, en temps réel les résultats et euh, voir comment ça évolue et même quand les résultats par la poste euh, arriveront. Euh, Julie, je vous remercie beaucoup pour cette soirée. Si on la résume, une, euh, un statu quo, une belle victoire pour les Verts, une majorité, un pari gagné pour euh, John Horgan et euh, bien sûr euh, Andrew Wilkinson, le chef des libéraux qui n'arrive toujours pas à concéder la victoire, à faire face à la réalité. Euh, sur toutes nos plateformes, nous continuerons d'analyser ce qui s'est passé ce soir. Je vous je vous invite à écouter la Radio-Canada première demain matin, le téléjournal demain soir et bien sûr sur le web. Ici Julie Carpentier, je tiens à remercier tous les gens qui ont travaillé ce soir pour vous présenter cette campagne électorale. Merci à vous d'avoir été des nôtres. Bonne nuit, bonne fin de soirée, à bientôt. It's three and a half years since the last election, and it's never a bad idea to ask the people of British Columbia what they think, and that's what we're going to be doing on October 24th. And that day has arrived. Good evening. This is City News at 6 for Saturday, October 24th. And yes, it's voting day here in B.C. NDP leader John Horgan called this snap election five weeks ago, one year before the fixed voting date in B.C. When the legislature was dissolved last month, the NDP were just a few seats away from a majority government. And John Horgan had one of the highest approval ratings of premiers in Canada. But will voters give him a majority after being thrown in?
into a provincial election in the middle of a global pandemic. It's something Horgan has been heavily criticized for by the B.C. Liberals and B.C. Green Party throughout this campaign. But the politicians have made their final pitches, and now the election is in the hands of you, the voter. This is a special edition of City News at 6, and it starts right now. Good evening. We're live at a new Westminster polling station, which has been open since 8 a.m. this morning, and it's going to close in about two hours at 8 p.m. But stay tuned to City News throughout the hour and at 11. And of course, check us out on citynews1130.com and on the radio at News 1130 for all your election coverage. I'm Lisa Eustace with News 1130, live here at the NDP headquarters in downtown Vancouver. This podium behind me, that's where we're going to see leader John Horgan speaking a few hours from now. Well, thank you for coming. And I want to start by thanking all of the people of British Columbia for taking a part in this critically important democratic process. It's what we do in Canada and it's what we do in British Columbia and it's the right way to do it. This has been a campaign like no other in the midst of a global pandemic. We had to learn new ways of campaigning and new ways of reaching out to the voters of British Columbia. We had to find ways to keep everyone safe and all of the parties and parties around the world are learning ways to campaign which do not involve crowds, involve a lot more virtual electronic contact with the people of British Columbia. To all our dedicated and passionate volunteers, it's a lot of cameras. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we are on the unceded territories of the Lekwungen speaking people. And I want to start by saying thank you. First, to our amazing 74 candidates who stepped up to run on a moment's notice, who got out there, did everything they could, gave it everything they got and got the signatures to get up and running on the ballot in just 11 days. To our incredible campaign staff who have worked tirelessly day and night to run this, this amazing campaign. Thank you and congratulations to my friend Adam Olson. <laughs> Adam is an amazing representative for the people of Saanich North and the islands, for our province on so many important issues. Adam, your support and friendship means the world to me, and I'm excited to serve another term with you. Thank you to my local campaign staff and team for working so hard in the Cowichan Valley to connect with voters in this election. You kept me grounded, and I'm grateful for everything you have done. And thank you to all the volunteers and donors who supported our campaigns. Your dedication and passion for what we stand for is inspiring. Good evening, uh, everyone. I want to acknowledge that I'm on the unceded traditional territory of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. BC has voted, and a majority has been called, but there are many, many hundreds of thousands of votes yet to be counted. And while we wait for that final count to happen, I want to assure people that I'm going to keep the focus right where it belongs on helping people get through this pandemic, making sure that they have the services that they need, and all British Columbians can sleep safely, knowing that we're going to do everything we can to keep them safe, healthy, and secure. One thing we know for certain is that on Monday, I'll be going back to work, and we're going to be putting people, businesses, and others who are focused on getting through the pandemic at the front of everything that we do. That has been our commitment and will continue to be our commitment now and going forward for the next four years. To the incredible volunteers that are here tonight and have worked so tirelessly to help us connect with British Columbians, I want to thank you very, very much. To the amazing team of BC NDP candidates in every corner of BC, and to all those people who put their names forward to offer to serve in their communities, I offer you my sincere gratitude and thanks for stepping up to help your neighbours get their lives better and make sure that everyone can benefit from the bounty of British Columbia. This has been an extraordinarily difficult election for many, many reasons, but it's one that I believe had to happen, and I think I'm grateful for all British Columbians that we have put the election behind us and we can get back to focusing on the things that matter most to you.